Welcome to Self Love Portrait, a show that gives you a deeper look into a female's journey of self love, acceptance, body image, and personal growth. Join me for honest conversations with inspiring women about self care, healing, and dealing with the challenges of life. Trust me, you're not alone in this journey. I am your host, Didit Nissenbaum, a multimedia artist and a self-love portrait expert who have photographed and empowered dozens of women around the world so they can show up and build their own self-confidence and express their true essence. This is where you discover that loving yourself is not a selfish act, but it's actually the starting point of every healing journey. I invite you to listen, learn, and be inspired to love yourself more and taking care of your mind, body, and soul. Hello, beautiful souls, and thank you so much for joining me. In today's show, I'm having the amazing Shira Magriso. So let's bring her on. Today we're having Shira. Hello. And Shira and I met um, through a mutual friend uh, named Shira as well. Yes. But we actually, we grew up in the same neighborhood mm-hmm. in Israel and we learned at the same high school. But life synchronized us right now together. Yeah. We're probably supposed to meet right here, right now. Exactly. After all the, in spite of the chances that, we, that it would happen sooner. <laughs> so it's really exciting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for being here. Um, and I'm very happy to host you here and that we can uh, share this beautiful experience together. Um, I'm super happy that I got this opportunity. So I thank you because it has been very special to me. I don't think I've ever done anything similar to this. And I felt like I needed it. It was just at the right time at the right place. So mm. yeah, I'm grateful. Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just start with yeah. the questions. Mm-hmm. So first is, what does self-love mean to you? Oh, um, yeah, so I think self-love is just the ability to just connect deeply to myself. Like when I look my, at, my, at my eyes in the mirror and I see my soul and I see my essence And I see the beauty in me, even though I have a lot of self-criticism or judgment, I still choose to see the beauty and to put emphasis on it and to celebrate it, even if it's imper- imper- imperfect and even if it's not how society tells me that it should be, just because I'm connected and loving. And yeah, it's like loving the divine part in me, the bigger, the bigger mm. self, the higher self. Beautiful. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to soak it in. Yeah. Mm. And how do you practice self-love? So I found that showers, long showers, mm. are uh, helping me with that because it gives me the opportunity to disconnect from everything, from my phone, from people, from media of all kinds. I just go there and it's silent. And I touch my body and it's very sensual with the soap and the smells. And I can really take my time and appreciate every single part of my body and put soap on it and clean it and give it the attention. So that's one of the things. Hmm. Uh, I also enjoy running. In, running is like meditation for me because it's just doing one thing for a, a certain period of time. It clears my mind. It gives me power. I feel strong. I feel like I'm able, like I'm capable of doing anything I want. Um, and it's healthy. Mm. It, my body feels light after. Yeah. I like that you took the shower and made it a ceremonial act mm. with intention of purifying and cleansing. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. The intention is the, yeah, that's the key. Always. Always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. And what are your daily practices of self-care? So I, I have this serum that I put before I go to bed. Mm. My sister sends it to me from Israel um, and I live in Australia now. So it's very special to me to get it even to here. 
it's uh it's made out of uh herbs and uh essential oils and it's just pure um ingredients and it's amazing like the smell of it and the way my skin feels when i put it it's just it feels like like an elixir of of like youth i don't oh, wow. know it's it's pretty good and <laughs> uh and i put it every night before i go to sleep and my partner loves the smell and it's it's a thing that i do for a while because that's what my sister is like that's her uh, products that she's selling I'll definitely want to check her out when I'll be in Israel too. Yeah, yeah. Also, Shira is using her products. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's really good. So that's one thing. Um, I think also with food, I put attention in food. I make my own food. I try not to eat outside. I cut the vegetables. We love to the vegetables. I bless them. I bless the every... single thing that I put inside I inside my salad I bless and I love and that's important for me because I feel like I'm also eating the energy that's mm. making of the food so important mm. oh yeah. thank you for this reflection mm. I, I I think some, sometimes for me uh I think for all of us we tend to eat too fast or not thinking about what we're eating and doing something else while we're eating and But really put an intention before you eat and then put it inside your body it's really like mm. you nourish your body and your soul yeah. at the same time mm. yes yeah. it's very really important it feels good yeah yeah definitely so if we talk about nourishment how do you nourish your body mind soul mm. I think uh, so a major thing will be reading I like reading um, higher books consciousness knowledge and esoteric knowledge mm-hmm. I feel like this really revived me and give me meaning and I can see the world as like a beautiful place of wonder so that is one of my favorites and writing as well it's another thing that is really cleaning me from the inside giving me inspiration creating all the problems positive changes that I had in my life it was something that I write and I wished for and then it happened mm. so it's like magic I just put it on the paper and I ask for it and I pray for it and it, it manifests itself so mm. it's beautiful yeah yeah the queen of manifestation <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean sometimes it takes time of you course know, of but course. it always happens eventually yeah yeah Also a very good reminder. Mm. <laughs> Have you ever had issues with body image? Yes. Yes, I think like most women growing up, teenagers, when I was a teenager, it was the hardest because I felt like I was ugly. I had um, bracelets in my teeth and uh, pimples and I was chubbier and I was like awkward looking. I didn't feel good about myself. Then in certain periods I felt better, then in certain periods I felt, again, not pretty. So it comes and goes all the time. Yeah. And yeah, I think for me, issues about my bum, about uh, my hips and waist, all the lower part of my body, like trying to tone it and trying to make it really sh- like beautiful and strong. And like it sometimes seems... impossible like sometimes say okay this is my shape maybe I can't go further than this <laughs> so it's always like a struggle yeah but sometimes I just let go and I love it as it is and that th- those are the best moments when I accept it and love definitely it. I think also one of the issues we have with body image is because the media mm. uh, it's always by this ideal beauty that you need to look in a certain shape to you Uh, to be beautiful in yeah. a way. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. And everything is like... Uh, it's like women in the media are presented as something to look at. Yeah. So you feel like you need to be like some kind of a decoration. People will look at you and they will say, ah, this is beautiful. Yeah, But yeah. men don't deal with that. Like they are not something that people look at them true. as well as like they do with women. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a problem of society. It's a bigger one. It's true. 
mm. sad and I really hope that one day it will change. And yeah. I think we are starting a change in a way. For sure. But think that, let's say, okay, now like a big bump, now it's become... Sexy. Yeah. Yeah. So now people that don't have bump, they're like, oh, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm just going to do a surgery about that. Yeah. So it's also about, mm, like, let's have a mainstream of... Each body is unique and perfect mm. the way it is. And, and natural. Yes. Like not with implants and, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Just accept. And I'm not really against that, but I am against it if you do it because you compare yourself to someone else. Yeah. yeah. If um, it comes from inside and it's really what you want and you're aware and it's yeah. not influenced by others' opinions, then yes. Definitely. Yeah. Do you think that the body image affected your relationship with food? Yeah, for sure. Of course. There are certain foods that I stopped eating completely. When I found out uh, what they make, make me feel, like how they make me look and what do they do in my body, then mm. I just cut them like 100%. Like what? Um, like the thing that I loved eating the most and all my life was like my favorite, favorite, favorite. Even the whole cuisine was like the Italian cuisine. And mm. I couldn't give it up, like all the Parmesan cheese and, and pasta. <laughs> and now I just don't eat pasta anymore because I realized that it's, it doesn't do well to my body. And, yeah. I, and it was like an addiction to me. And yeah. now I realized that. And I feel a lot better because I have the control over my body again. And I'm not like, ah, I just need the oh, carbs. so great, yeah, and not to have cravings. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I still sometimes, have, like chocolate is another like weakness that I have, but I feel like it's healthy and good. <laughs> if it's dark, but not like the 95% that is you, you feel like you eat dust, but yeah, you know, like yeah. 70%, <laughs> it's good, it's tasty. And it's healthy. healthier. Yeah. yeah. yeah it comes with the age. <laughs> <laughs> like bitter, bitter things. Yeah, sooner uh, you, like you're going to find out, you're, oh, I, I actually like the 95%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, more you, the older you get. Yeah. <laughs> um, so are you struggling to love yourself nowadays? Yes. Yes, I have this um, thought that I need to be uh, looking in a very specific way. So if my eyebrows are a bit unshaped or I gain like a kilo and a half because I was just on vacation or I don't know, like small things, I have pimples, my skin is not perfect, then it bothers me. Like, I don't feel relaxed. It, like, sits on me. No matter mm. what I do, I have this in my mind. You don't look perfect. You're not enough. You need to, to improve something in your appearance. And I walk with that feeling, even though I really try to. And my partner is saying, like, you're, you're so beautiful. No matter what you, you think about yourself, no matter what you do to yourself, you're just going to stay beautiful. Yeah. I hear him, but I can't believe it. Mm, yeah, you need to feel it yourself. Yeah. Uh, are you practicing any ways that can help you feel this way that you want to? You know, like understanding, okay, um, nothing is perfect. Everyone has pimples sometimes mm. and or everything is changing and temporary. And some days I wake up and I feel, damn, I'm hot. Yeah. And some days I wake up and like, mm, that's okay. Yeah. But not to let it bothers you too much. Yeah, that's that's a good question. And I think that this is why I also like photography. Because one of the things that's helped me is just to look in the mirror. And, and to l- try to see my image as something objective. Mm. You know, like to see, oh, okay, this is a woman. She's like 30 years old. She has, well, she has a nice skin color. Her, her eyes are quite nice. They have a shine. Like to really mention all the the nice things that I see as if I'm like looking at a, at a magazine I'm seeing mm. a poster of someone it's exactly why I believe in the power of photography because you can just look at yourself as as something from the outside for a moment without all the the judgment that you carry without all the bad things that you used to say to yourself you can look and say ah, ah this woman is actually pretty because because we are in a lot of different ways and some sometimes we just don't we forget to look from a bigger perspective so. oh so true yeah yeah beautiful practice yeah, yeah to bring yourself a bit out of the picture yeah i like yeah. it i thought i'm the only one that's doing it <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> kidding <laughs> yeah. um in what ways you think you can give yourself more love hmm. well i definitely need to 
focus on things that I love doing instead of how I look. I think that will help a lot because there are so many things I love doing, but sometimes I spend so many time on improving my looks instead of doing these things and I just feel drained and empty after. Mm. And the more I am obsessed with my look, the less good I look. That's like that's the truth. If I just let it be, then nature does itself. You drink water, you go to sleep, you, you look fresh. Yeah. But if you're like trying to put makeup and trying to fix your eyebrows and trying to put some a mask on your face and you know do all the beauty treatments, then it's just like your body is like, oh, just let me be, and it's shown. Hmm. And I feel like I should just let it be and do stuff, do stuff. I I have so many things I love to do and there's not uh, enough time Mm. for everything. Yeah, it's always like that. Yeah. So basically, you think that for yourself, it will be just start doing what you love and putting away on the side. Ignore those voices that Mm. tells you, oh, you have this one, Mm, like the, the critical voice within you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I find myself like I'm starting to do something creative. I'm writing or I'm uh, I'm drawing and I'm enjoying myself. And then I go to the room and I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God, I have a, a giant pimple, a blackhead on my nose. And I'm starting to touch my face in order to like fix it. Mm-hmm. Then I find myself, I spend an hour, I'm out of the flow of the other thing I did. Mm. And I, I, I fucked my face up. <laughs> like I, I look like I, it's it's a mess because I touched, you know. Trust so. me. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We have this, yeah. Yeah. And I think that all of us, uh, this is why sometimes I think to myself, maybe it's better to live without a mirror. When I lived in Israel in my bedroom, I didn't have a mirror. Mm. I used the, the frame, the mirror of the frame, and I just uh, hang some strings and I put all kinds of feathers and stuff. Mm. And whoever came inside the room, we're like, oh, they automatically came to look at themselves in the mirror. They're like, oh, there is no mirror in here. So that was also interesting for me to see and uh, it's just really nice to just to be. Yeah. Um, because the moment you walk near a mirror, either that can happen or it's just like, oh, like you go mm. outside of this zen yeah. um, that you've been. So Yeah. Yeah. So it's either you put, you go to a mirror with an intention of seeing yourself in beautiful eyes. Yeah. Or you go and you look for the flaws. It's the intention in which with you coming to the mirror. Yeah. 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 That's true. Actually, you remind me one time I was in a very deep state of mind. And I remember that people used to say to me that I have a very deep gaze. Like, they were like sometimes mm-hmm. some people told me I can't look at your eyes. Mm. They were in the Burning Man, probably under uh, drugs, but still, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then one day I was in a very deep state of mind and I just walked near the mirror and I looked at them like, wow, this is the case that they were talking about. Mm. I'm like, wow, this is intense. Good, but intense. <laughs> so, so that was funny. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like uh, they discover yourself um, mm. yeah. and see yourself like from the outside. But how others look at you. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's uh, very empowering, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk about the Naked Truth, the photo shoot session that we just did. Mm-hmm. And I would love to hear how you felt before the Naked Truth. Mm-hmm. And did you have any doubts or fears? So I had some fears because I thought that Maybe it will look bad. I have pimpled now with a huge one on my face. And I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm uh, supposed to get my period in like a few days. I feel a bit puffed and like maybe I don't look my best. But then I realized, yeah, I, it's okay. I do it for myself. I'm not trying to impress anyone. It's just a process for me. So exactly. <laughs> it's good. And what did you feel during the photo shoot? So I was... I was really able to feel open, feel safe in this container, feel like I can be myself, I can move the way I want to. I'm not posing, I'm not judged, I'm just who I am speaking about the things that matter. And I could really connect to myself and to understand myself better during. And how did you feel after the photo shoot? 
I felt good. I felt alive. I felt like uh, energies in my body. I felt sexy. I felt like I'm a woman. Mm. I felt like I love my whole parts. And mm. yeah, I felt more complete. Oh, <laughs> yay, that's beautiful. I loved it, yeah. Um, what have you learned about yourself from being photographed? Mm. Uh, again, I, I witnessed my uh, fear of being photographed from the profile. Mm. Like how my first instinct is to hide something. So like put my hair on my mole so it wouldn't be visible. Or put my hand or, you know, like really try to hide my flaws. Mm. So that was something I noticed. Like the patterns that are automatically happening. And, if, and like for the first time I could really stop and see them. So that was very powerful for me. Um yeah that's interesting because yeah. I you did it in a very natural way yeah you know that I I don't think I actually noticed when you tried to hide yeah besides the time that we actually talked about it and you gave an example because I'm so used to it mm-hmm. you know sometimes I just I, I put myself in the position in certain positions that I'm already used to doing for a mm-hmm. long long time because I think it's it flatters me more I don't want to expose all of me So I think yeah, that was a big gift that I could get from this. Yeah, it's really good that you observe that. Mm. And now you're going to be maybe more aware to your body language and like, wait, wait, what am I trying to hide? Mm. I am that I am. Yes. <laughs> like I'm everything. You shouldn't hide any part of your self, your body, your face, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree. I would like to do that more and more. Hmm. And what was your favorite part of the photo shoot? <laughs> um, I loved the songs. Like when the, my favorite songs were playing, I just felt that it, it always awakened something in me. So it created this natural response of, of joy or nostalgia or even a bit sadness, memories. So it was really touching me mm. from inside. And it made me feel like it's the soundtrack of my life. So it had a story. It had meaning. So I <laughs> love that part. That was a good, good one. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Tell you like a soundtrack of your life. I, I like that. I yeah. didn't think it about this way. Because it's different periods. Yeah. You think, ah, I was then. And, and then it's a story because you realize, ah, okay. So I had to go through this to get there. And, and you know, this, it makes uh, a meaning. It's yeah. like a circle. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you feel connected to yourself while we were shooting? Um, and do you think that you observe your feelings and emotions more than usual? Yeah, I definitely felt connected to myself. I felt like how um, certain movements in my body awake certain responses, like emotional responses in me and uh, how just lying in a certain way or standing in a certain way, how, how does it feel in my completeness like in my whole experience mm. so if I'm lying down then I feel the relaxation if I'm standing I feel like I need to move my pelvis it's it's was really connecting the physical to the emotional yeah so that was strong yeah so I felt connected I felt like I'm myself very powerful yeah yeah being naked in my bedroom is just the, the most comfortable situation I can ever be in Hmm. like that's home and they go back to your womb yeah yeah exactly and there <laughs> were some times that I really wanted to I found myself wanting to roll to a fittest position <laughs> <laughs> like literally yeah happened. I think this is why I had this idea about the bedroom because the bedroom symbolizes the comfort zone the, the womb the mm. the safest place to be mm, yeah and the place with unconditional love that's true yeah yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think that self-love is important and why? Definitely. I think that in the times that I don't like myself, my decisions are wrong. My choices are not benefiting, benefiting me. Um, every path that I take when I don't love myself is just a path of fear because it's either you, you go from fear or from love. It's the two situations. And... it love starts with myself I can't love anything else if I if I don't love myself because it's not real it's like I'm looking f- to get if I don't love myself I'm looking to get energy from others I'm looking to suck energy maybe because I don't give myself energy 
So yeah. I'm not I'm not doing anything good in the world and I can't really share love with others. So it's the base of our existence. Definitely. And I really love how you connect the self-love with uh, decision making mm. um, because it's so true. Like now I just said that I'm like, oh, I just said some memories came up. Those moments where I could take better decision that will benefit for me and keep me in a safe place. But Probably I wasn't aware enough or I was in a less self-loving place that it's like, okay, I'm just going to do it. Not thinking about the consequences of myself. It's exactly how I feel also. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In what ways do you heal yourself? Well, there's like the obvious way of going to a workshop and then... You know, they, they bring you to this process where you go through deep healing by different tools. But I think the real challenge is, like you said, to heal yourself and do it on a daily basis and to know how to give yourself the love you need when you need it. So I think some things that I learned, it's just this year, actually, it's pretty fresh and new. Mm. I learned that writing is healing for me. Oh, definitely. Just like a, the first thing in the morning when you just put your every single thought on the paper and clear and then you... you Every time that I do it, I get to some conclusion mm. and it feels like an insight and it feels like it's so right to do that. So I have this diary that I have uh, every day. I have a, um, except for what I'm writing that comes out naturally from myself, I have like a task. So they give me, for example, um, take a book that you like, mm -hmm. look at his, uh, the name of the book and write a different uh, story. Or it's some creative stuff. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So it's also something that's healing for me because it's really bringing me inside. Beautiful. Yeah. What do you wish you had known when you were a little girl? <laughs> ah, that I'm special. That I always used to give like credit, extra credit to others, you know, like they know better. Mm. I didn't trust myself. I was like, no, my mom knows better. My sister knows better. And yeah, they were older and I'm more experienced. But for myself, I know better always. And that's something I didn't have in mind. I was always thinking I gave my, my power to people with authority. Mm. So, and even as a child, like the yeah. teachers, and I didn't listen to myself enough. And if, uh, if I did, then maybe I would play more and study less today I feel like it wasn't that important <laughs> you know play playfulness is way more like I think pleasurable and that's a reason we came to this planet and yeah yeah it developed us more yeah mm -hmm. and uh and yeah I would definitely do that a lot more than just like studying or trying to satisfy people that I that I thought that their opinion is better mm. than mine It's true and it's so important. Yeah. Oh. It's the main main well, now we can grow our kids with this kind of way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the correction mm -hmm. we do. How can you bring more love and compassion into your life and towards your inner self? Um I think well spending time with women is one. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's uh something that I miss and it's something that's helping me bring love to the f woman that I am because we all share similar you know feelings and body images and it, it helps to see that we're in the same boat yeah um we're not alone in this journey yeah not mm -hmm. alone we have the same issues the same dilemmas and we hold each other mm -hmm. and also doing like doing things like you do You know, thinking about an idea and making a project and making it come true, that will give me a lot of satisfaction. I know that. Mm. It's something I've been neglected since I moved to Australia. And I really, really want to come back and be productive and create. Yay. Yeah. I wish for you that in the next month, you know, soon we're going to be in 2020. Uh, so I don't know when the podcast will come to life, but we're in December. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In December of 2019. And it's very exciting because it's now a time to really 
think about the last decade. How did I grow? How did I, what did I learn? Mm-hmm. How did I develop? And what is that I want to create more in the next decade? How do I see myself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a very good time to think about it and True. manifest. You are the manifestation queen. So come on, <laughs> just write it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I'm waiting for it to really happen. But it's also you have to do a step. Mm-hmm. And then God makes two steps towards you. Yes. But it's a, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What advice do you want to give to yourself? Um, just to be more compassionate to myself and to be patient because everything happens at the right time. Don't need to rush anything. Life is good. The, the, the creation is in my favor. And that's, Everything is possible also. Like I, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm surrounded by good people, I'm in a, living in a beautiful place. It's all like to remind myself of the, the positivity that I have all around me. It's so true. And especially with patient, because sometimes in our head it already happened. Mm. In our, I mean, in my head I already have this and this and I'm doing this and that, but oh wait, reality check, okay, it takes time. Mm. And the divine timing, everything happens in the right time. Also, like you said, it's a combination of my own work towards that and then whatever life possibilities bring to me. Mm. So definitely combination and then also trust. Trust the process, trust yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another big thing. Yeah. yeah, to trust and to have faith that it will just happen when mm-hmm. it's supposed to, not push it, not get it attached to a result. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes also oh, it's very important to not get attached to the result or do something just because of the result. Mm-hmm. Because the only thing we have is the way, enjoying the way, like right here, right now. Usually we have results in our mind, but they're always different for the good and for less good so yeah mm-hmm. just be open and really do it because it makes you feel good it fulfills you yeah for the the way not the destination yeah exactly mm. and one last question do you have any advice that you want to give for other women yeah i would say just really as women we got an amazing intuition and we have superpowers mm-hmm. and we are like a divine force here in on the world and we need to remember that and to bring that gift to others and to celebrate our femininity and to just come together with each other and support each other and give inspiration and just be proud of being a woman because it's something so amazing i would say that's what i want remind myself and the advice that i want to give to teenagers to women yeah thank you for that <laughs> you're all goddesses we forget yeah, that exactly and and as goddesses we can really we're capable you know sometimes we feel like it's a man's world or we feel insecure but just to remind ourselves the the power the divine power that's in us it's what will change everything mm, beautiful yeah you just gave me an idea um what will be the title for you for this journey today mm, i would say um awakening the goddess <laughs> <laughs> bam yeah awakening the goddess yay it's always there but sometimes you need to give it space Yeah, and focus and just allow it, yeah. allow it to, to be. Mm, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. And I appreciate your time, energy, and presence. I'll be back next week with another episode, so stay tuned. I wish you all a beautiful week ahead. And if you want to learn about self-love portrait and start your own journey with healing through photography or understand better the Naked Truth photo ceremony, I invite you to check out the information below this podcast.